Okay guys, I thought I would do an FAQ. I haven't done any questions and answers in a while. I got my coffee. I'm a little tired because I have a baby that refuses to sleep at night anymore. But yeah, here we go. By Mark Designs says, Hey Lynn, what is your educational background and what led you into being a maker slash woodworker? So when I went to school, I was all into the languages and the social sciences and all of that. Um, so I did not really do design work in school or anything uh, like that. Although I did do woodworking when I was a kid, you know, like in second, third, fourth grade, something like that. Um, but when you are a kid, you know, you just go through the motions. And while I liked it, I did not really get absorbed into it at that point. It wasn't until we actually bought our first house and started working on, on furniture and things that we really wanted that I got into it fully. Um, especially the woodworking part. I mean, I've always liked to do make things and I always did a lot of sewing and painting and all of that. But the woodworking is a whole different thing, I think, in many ways. The woodworking is just awesome because it enables you to do so many things, which otherwise, you know, these days, okay, when I'm, I'm thinking about our house and I'm thinking about like all the things that I want to do, you know, furniture I want to build. And then I think, oh God, can you imagine if you weren't able to do things? Like how difficult would it be and how expensive would it be? And you wouldn't be able to custom make anything and fit anything for your space. And then I think, well, everybody should learn how to do this because it's, you know, and, and it doesn't always have to be complicated. You know, you can do something with plywood and pocket holes or simple joinery and uh, framing lumber. Um, and you can create some really cool, you know, pieces for your space. It's such a privilege to be able to do these kinds of things. Um, and I love doing it. Robert Villa says, do you sell your work somewhere? Not really, I mean, I have my website, starbornover.com, where I sell a couple plants and some of the wax polish. Um, but, you know, I don't sell any of the products that I make, you know, I, I make everything for myself or for friends and family, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I often think that what my work is the videos in many ways. And uh, it's not really about creating the product so much. Hi, what do you use to design your projects? Paper drawing or computer? So I use paper drawings and that's what I've been doing for all this time. However, lately I started playing around with the SketchUp because I was thinking about how um, I really should get into that more because I, I just think that it should shift my brain a little bit. And I always like to shift your brain whenever possible. So the shop is kind of in a big, constant state of flux, I suppose you could say. Um, I've been working on a couple of projects that are in the works in terms of videos, but they're not quite there yet. Um, one of which is the tool wall behind me. It's a power tool and charging tool wall, which is gonna help clean this space up a lot. Um, so that's kind of nice. I'm also making room for some bigger tools over here. One tool in particular that I'm really looking forward to is getting a new lathe. I gave away my old lathe in Corvallis at a meetup before we left. Uh, so I don't have a lathe and I kind of miss that. I'm looking forward to that. I recently got the uh, shop electricity uh, you know, upgraded to 20 so that I can accept bigger tools. The other thing of course that is in the works are the bookcases, the built-in library in the living room. This is all trim for that. And that project's been in the making for some time now. And finally getting to the end spurt there, although there's still a little bit left to do. Now, the other thing that I'm working on is the little shop out there. So let's, let's walk over there and take a look. So here's the little shop. And I'm working on like a plastic on there right now to protect it a little bit from the rain. So next up here, I'm gonna be building stairs, going up to the deck as well as railings around, and then a whole bunch of stuff in there. Let's get back to our questions. Uh, S. Janavel, I butchered that, sorry. Hi, do you make money with this or this is, is this just a hobby? No, both me and Matt, we do this full time. So we, yes, we make money with it, but it started as a hobby. Jim Days Me says, how old is Darwin? Darwin, come on. Darwin is seven, he's gonna be seven this year. Uh, he's, although he's got a lot of white, so he looks a little older, but he acts kind of like a big puppy. Andy from Glass Impressions, hi Andy, says, what is your favorite tool? Usually when I get this question, I, I kind of say whatever I'm using at the mo moment the most, but then fundamentally, I think it always comes back to the table saw. You get this question like, oh, I'm just beginning to woodwork, what tool should I get? And the circular saw and the jigsaw are very popular uh, answers. Um, but I really think that 
you know what, you want to eliminate as much frustration as possible in the beginning. And you want to make it fun and efficient and get as much done as possible. And you can't beat the table saw for that. It's just so much better. Everything is straighter. Everything is more precise. It's faster. So I would really just go with the table saw if I was starting out. Um, and nothing too fancy, but nothing too cheap either because... Yeah, I used to use a uh, DeWalt, what was the number? That one, which was a great uh, to start off with. Uh, so I would say that's my favorite tool, the table saw. Very original answer. <laughs> Något ting man sällan ser på er woodworkers USA är arbetskläder. Är det bara på Så Örjan här is wondering if you woodworkers in the US aren't wearing overalls or work clothes normally. And I don't know about that. I mean, I guess if you're watching people on YouTube, they often are working in their garage or at home. So they're not on a job site or anything like that. But uh, I don't know. I uh, don't really have an answer for you there. Fred McIntyre, hi Fred, asks, and now that you're on the East Coast, is there any chance that you'll attend Maker Faire in New York? Um, yes, I would love to. That's one of the reasons why we moved out here to be able to go to events like that. There's so many more things happening on the East Coast. So it's definitely on my list. Oh yeah, on the same line there, Lazy Guy DIY, hi Adam, asks if I'm going to Workbench Con. And no, I don't have any plans for that right now. Although I would really like to. Um, I don't know, it's like August is still so small, so I don't really want to leave him, and I figured it'd be kind of annoying to bring him, so... Okay, so this is the future little shop. Um, yeah, really excited about this project. Um, it's a lot of work to be done here still, but I've been posting a couple of videos about this build, and uh, there's been quite a few people who have been a bit confused wondering, uh, why are you doing this? Don't you already have shop? So uh, yes, that shop is, is over there and that's the, uh, the dirty shop. That's where all the tools are gonna be, all of that. Um, but this place here is gonna be more of a quiet, clean hand tool shop with a nice bench, hand tools. This is where I wanna come out and do design work, thinking, perhaps some editing. Uh, just somewhere to go that's quiet because uh, so it's not just me around here if it was just me around here i think the one shop would be perfect would be plenty but both me and matt are around here all the time working on different things um, and i think that in order to be really productive it's nice to be able to have somewhere that's private so that is a pretty big part of it um, i guess it, it, you know, in many ways it is a bit of a challenge, you know, working from home, being self-employed. Um, what is that saying? That the enemy of uh, being working from home, the fridge, the couch, and the bed. <laughs> and uh, you have to come up with strategies to stay motivated so you don't fall into those. Every now and then you fall into those traps. Um, but, but staying motivated and, 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 and keeping focused is, is, is a major thing. So lately I've been really trying to come up with ways in, like how to stay more productive and I think a major part of it is having designated spaces for different tasks and different things. So that's why I'm thinking, okay, the outdoor shop, that's where all the, the actual work takes place. That's where all the, the cutting and most of the woodworking takes place. But then having somewhere else to go for the actual design work and the editing and cleaner stuff like that, that's private and quiet. It's gonna be a major thing. The other thing we did is we had the Tinker desk with all the electronic stuff inside uh, the shop, which was not really a great fit. It was never meant to be permanent, but we actually moved all that stuff inside the house for now. Uh, because dust and electronics don't really go together. Plus, there's no privacy. There's nowhere to kind of just go and really get focused on work. Uh, and, and staying focused, I think it's, it's, it's a really big, it's a really big, difficult thing. Niklas says, Var i Sverige kommer du från? So he's basically asking, where in Sweden am I from? Um, so I grew up in Nyköping, outside of Stockholm. So in the Stockholm region. Blues Woodworking says, how do you get any work done with such a cute baby? <laughs> yeah, I ask myself that as well. Um, getting work done with a baby, I think is a major difficulty actually. Um, okay, so what I'm doing basically is, first of all, I'm scheduling everything around his naps. Right now he takes two naps a day and I'm so dreading the day when he will take one nap and then eventually none. Uh, so I'm, I'm really trying to be very efficient when I have the time away from him. And then uh, my mother-in-law who lives here with us, uh, she also takes care of him quite a bit. So when I really need to push through and work uh, during other hours, she takes him for, for you know, an hour or two. 
So, um, so that's kind of the, the setup I have. And then I also try to get to work once he goes to bed at night. Um, so that's one thing. And lately though, he has decided that he doesn't like to sleep at night for some reason. I guess children go through this circle. So we are all a little bit tired. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is very difficult. Um, I think the most difficult thing is to get completely, you have to be so efficient with your time once you have it. So you have to really focus on it. Of course it helps that I'm not doing this by myself. I mean, me and Matt, we're both doing this together. So, um, God, I'm thinking about people who are doing this all by themselves and, you know, who maybe have a child to, to care for or something like that. And God, I mean, because we can divide tasks so I don't have to do like the complete thing and he does a lot of, you know, prep work or design work or, or, or other things. Um, so it, it, it lessens the burden a lot, but still, still, it's really hard to, uh, to be as productive as you would like. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. I would like to be much more productive and I'm trying to figure that out. Um, one of the reasons then, you know, why I want to do this shop is, um, to, to create a better situation, a better setup. I think structure is very important. I think it kind of determines how we behave so fundamentally. So if you have things set up in a way that makes it easier for you, I think that is huge. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. Um, Roger904 says, do you miss the West Coast? We live in Georgia and would love to go out West at some point. I guess the, I guess the grass is always greener. I guess it is, but um, so we lived here now for six months about. We uh, lived in Oregon before this and now we live in Virginia. And one of the reasons why we wanted to move here was, well, we wanted more property and a bigger shop and, you know, more space to play. Um, and we were a little bit sick of the Oregon, the, the, the rainy season, which is, you know, most of the winter and the spring, fall, very dreary and gray there. Um, and so far I've been, it's been really good. I've been really loving living out here. It's crisper. The days, are, there's more sunshine. It's not so gray and dreary. I mean, it's colder at times, but today it's like a freak day. It's February and it's like 70 degrees. I can't believe it. I was like, this is unreal. I, I don't understand this. Like my brain doesn't, it's not connecting. It's really weird, but it's really nice at the same time. Of course, the summers are really humid and, and there's a lot of bugs, which I, I don't love the bugs. Um, of course, we're also living in the country, which is a change. Previously, we lived in a college town, which was really nice. I do miss that in some ways. Being able to just walk around, going downtown, going to coffee shops and restaurants in that way, you know, that was very nice. Um, on the other hand, we have more space here to, 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 to do things, to build things, which is what fundamentally I want. So it's a bit of a trade-off. As someone else in the Richmond area, I struggle with finding good materials. Yours always look a thousand times better than what I find. Any suggestions for places to shop? So first of all, I haven't been here very long. I don't really know the area that well. Um, and I haven't really found that many places either. So in terms of lumber, Hackett's Lumber in Palmyra um, is really nice. I'll put a link to their Instagram in the description. They have a lot of slabs, a lot of rough sawn lumber. So Colorado Hawkeye says, where did your love of tinkering come from? Where's your vision for your use of electronics? <laughs> it's, it's funny with, with the electronic stuff because I find that, you know, you make videos about whatever it is that you're doing at the moment. And so right now I'm doing a lot of construction work and organizing stuff. Um, and then the electronics get kind of pushed aside a little bit. And electronics in general has, it was never really my, my strong side. That's where Matt's really good. He does a lot of the, uh, the tinkering and the experimenting and prep work uh, for those kinds of things. I really would like to integrate more Raspberry Pis and Arduinos in the future to create like really cool systems. Systems for the home um, where you can measure things and capture things. I, I really would like to play with just solar panels and energy use and things like that in general. Um, because the, that's what we can do out here on this property, which is really, really exciting. Uh, less finished projects in many ways, and more when you kind of test out concepts. Um, that's where I really would like to go. Well, yeah, I think that's about it. If I didn't get to your question, perhaps it came in after I finished filming, um, I'm gonna save it and try to incorporate it into a later video. Um, otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any other questions. Perhaps, you know, one thing sparked another and now you're wondering something else. Um, but yeah, um, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.